Football, America's favorite pastime, a sport which unites people from different areas, beliefs, and backgrounds, yet one which requires years of practice, dedication, and sacrifice, all so that players may step into a stadium and play the game they love in front of thousands. But in one play, all that hard work can be taken away. This is Dietrich Riley, a talented safety who played for St. Francis and UCLA. Though he had a promising future in football, Dietrich suffered a career-ending injury. Today, we've brought him back to his home at the Rose Bowl to reflect on his athletic career and how he overcame the struggles presented to him. One mistake can cost you your whole career, and this is where it happened at, right here. Everybody wants to do that big hit. They want to hit that person, drive them out, knock them out of the game, and unfortunately, they're knocking themselves out of the game. So this is where it all started. Fourth quarter, up 24-14. Uh, the opposing team, you know, Cal, they had the ball in the 20. Uh, I remember we were in cover one. They ended up throwing a little flat route. Made the tackle, it was like a gain of like four yards. Then we hurried up in tempo. We kind of picked up the pace. About the fourth play, it all begins right over here on our 28-yard line. We ran a stretch play right here. I'm in cover four, I'm playing back, you know, I take my little reach step, come up, lay up the crown of my helmet, and I'm laying flat, just looking up right here. Everyone's running over, trying to like, you know, ask if I'm okay, and I'm like, man, I'm fine, I just can't move. Football meant a lot. That was all I knew. Um, I was started at the age of seven, so, really taught me a lot about, you know, life, discipline, communication, you know, being organized, working under, you know, many circumstances. And just being on that field, I was just, you know, I was at peace. But when I was out there, my approach was just to always just leave it out there on the field, don't have any, you know, regrets and always just leave a statement, you know, because of my goal, you know, my aspiration was to make it to the NFL. Dietrich is a stellar athlete, he still is to this day. Uh, but the great thing about it was, was that um, both of our athletic abilities complemented each other. He could run a, a little more between the tackles than I could, and I had a little bit better hands than him, even though he might not admit that. As a player, he was probably one of my favorite defensive players to ever watch in high school football. Watching him tackle was fantastic. He would uh, wrap up, drive the person, and just drive him straight to the ground. It was textbook, it was fun to watch. He was quick, agile, and powerful. And you don't see that all the time, so it was fun to watch. I was amazed just to be able to see not only uh, the athletic talent that he had, but just the ability of how he was able to just be so fluid and smooth and it made it just look so easy. He's a great person. I uh, love seeing him. Uh, he, he lights up a room when he comes in with his attitude and his personality. He's just one of those guys that you always want to have in your corner. He's somebody that's a quality guy. On second down, time winding down in the third quarter, just over a minute. Mannion, oh, that had an opportunity to get picked. As the Bruins, Zumwalt, watch this hit right at the end of the play. Yes, Dietrich Riley spares no expense right here in taking a shot. At what I really enjoyed about football was the adrenaline rush and just the whole contact, you know, and it's nothing better than being a free safety coming downhill and it's just you one-on-one -on -one with a running back or a receiver or whatever, a tight end. And you're just able to make that, that just the sound of contact, making that tackle, and just the feeling of it, that, just that collision, it's like a car crash. It's just nothing, nothing better than that. I know, you know Coach Halleck, you know, back in St. Francis, he would always get on me about my technique, not leading with the crown of my helmet. Not lunging, really, you know, running through tackles, having great technique. It was stupid. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest, I used to stand there and watch him play and scream at him, keep your head up, keep your head up, keep your head up. Uh, you know, everybody watched ESPN, looks for big hits, and he went from wrapping up and driving somebody to just hitting as hard as he could, and he kept dropping his head. Um, and I used to tell him, you gotta keep your head up or I'm gonna scrape you off this field one day. The game I got injured in was, it was against Cal, which is our rival, October 29, 2011. And I remember like it was yesterday, you know, when it's a no huddle situation, you're kind of overwhelmed a bit. They ran down, 
you know, stretch play. They're running back Isis and um, came down and I lunged him in his hip. The rest is history. Able to get up. Caution that they can. The soberness of the situation on their knees, both teams. I was on the ground for about 30 to 40 minutes uh, until they, you know, got me on the stretcher and took me, you know, to the hospital where they ran all the exams and stuff. But the, you know, doctors, they were just telling me that I was born with a spinal stenosis, which is a, you know, narrow spine. So I feel like it was a blessing in disguise for me to be able to walk away from that injury being alive. I hope it stands as a reminder for a lot of people uh, in a couple ways. One, you can't always bank on sports. Uh, Dietrich was a high recruit, he was a blue chip athlete, he was an All-American, um, and with one play, he was done. The other thing, keep your head up. I mean, you see so many concussions and uh, spinal fractures that could be prevented just by tackling properly, not going for the big hit, and that's why we've seen this huge increase in concussions over the years, is people have gone away from tackling properly. Uh, in the long run, if they don't take care of this, they're going to kill the sport. I had a successful surgery in April. Uh, I recovered within two months, which is you know, very rare. Usually with a single level fusion with the spine, it's about, to, uh, about an eight to ten month recovery process. And I recovered within two months and I started lifting weights again, started running but I was you know, in great shape, I felt. And um, that's when I knew I could definitely make a comeback. I redshirted that you know, my junior year, and I came back and did spring ball and everything. I had a successful spring. And, but after that, when I had my last meeting with the, with the UCLA medical staff, that's when they kind of felt it's my best interest you know, to medical retire. I was just hoping, man, could I at least come back and just play one more game? That's all I wanted. I just wanted one more game. It was, the worst news I ever received in my life because, you know, football is something I've been doing my whole life. That's all I knew growing up. I feel like that's what identified me as a person. You know, everyone was like, that was just my childhood dream. I want to live out, make it a reality. It was it was a tough year. You know, I retired in, you know, July, July 2nd, 2013. Two months later, my grandmother had passed away from pancreatic cancer. I'm sorry, she was diagnosed and then she passed away in November. So. And you just talk about just things that just like just crumbled down. Like I felt life was at, a, was at an end. I'm like, man, what's next? It was just, uh, it was tough, man. But how I had to move on was I had, I fulfilled a promise to her and my family that I was gonna, you know, go to UCLA, get my degree. I felt like little things were coming into fruition. As a, as a, as a child, you know, my mother entered me in, you know, modeling competitions and stuff. At, you know, the local malls at the Paseo back then. I used to go as a, in my little sailor outfits and everything. And our family members and everything and friends were like, man, you just have a natural look. You, you're getting all the likes on Instagram, doing all the selfies. I had no idea and everything. I built the little solid fan base, making the popular pages and stuff. And one day I just went into four models and I went in for an open call. And as soon as I left the building, I really didn't know what to expect. They ended up calling me saying like, can you come back up to the office? So I went back up there and everything, and they were just expressing their interest and saying that they want to represent me. And I'm like, how am I gonna, what do you mean? You guys want to represent me? It's like, we want to sign you. I guess that was a part of God's plan for me to be in a model, being the face of Lululemon, Old Navy. Also, I've shot with uh, Kohl's, a men's warehouse. And for my commercial work, I've shot with, <laughs> I've shot with Sierra you know, process the fact like, man, I'm working with Sierra. You know, growing up as a kid, you see her on music videos and I was just infatuated with her. I'm like, man, this is Russell Wilson's wife and I'm working with her right now. This is Sierra. <laughs> uh, did, like I said, New York Fashion Week. I did the runway in New York, which is pretty cool. Made the Huffington Post, made, you know, Getty images. Talk about adrenaline rush, man, that was crazy. Being down that runway, it felt like I was moving a hundred miles per hour, but it was fun. I've been able to do campaigns, so now I'm chasing after the big screen. I want to get to, you know, get to the movies. I signed with the management company, so I feel like my next, you know, destination is definitely, you know, on the big screen. So we'll see what happens. Stay tuned. 
the favorite part of modeling, I would have to say, just being behind the camera, all eyes are on you. Just seeing those flashes, you know, you have the stylist, the makeup artists, all the assistants, everyone's just looking at you and you're just up there just working the camera and just being yourself, having that confidence. It's been a fun experience so far, really not knowing that I had it, that gift of, you know, being in front of the camera. Not some people could really adapt to that setting. And it's actually tougher than you think, you know, being on your feet all day, having 12 to 14 hour shoots, it can kind of take a toll on you. So, you know, me going in, you know, with that mental strength that you know, I developed out here on the football field at a young age, when I'm on set, it's just all eyes on me. Through all the struggle and adversity, Dietrich reflects on the things that kept him together. He leaves this advice for anyone facing the challenges of life. I would have to say always keep God first. He's got me, he's got me through so much adversity, you know, just talking to him, praying to him every day. I feel like, you know, just through my faith, it really challenges your character. Second is family. Without them, I wouldn't have made it this far, man, because I could have easily, like I said, gone down the wrong path of, you know, gang affiliation, whatever it is, just having, you know, met a lot of friends that I was close with at a young age, you know, choose that path. It could have been easy in my, you know, in my decision making, but my family kept me together and they always kept me in a positive spirit. Number three, I would always have to say, uh, <laughs> just having fun. You know, we're here, we're, we're visitors on this earth, so why not make the most out of any opportunity we have? Just have fun, whatever you're doing in life. And uh, just treat it, you know, every day as your last, you know, because it can always come to an end. No regrets. I learned a lot of, you know, from football. I, I learned a lot of um, patience, you know, resilience, and also, uh, you know, adapting to new environments, new things teaches you, you know, to really have that mental, that mental strength along with knowing yourself. I feel like, you know, the game of football can teach you a lot about life and um, it's a beautiful sport. This, this is my, actually my first time really coming here on this, like really reminiscing on this actual particular line. And usually I'm, when I come on the field or whatever, you know, I just like take it all in like, oh, I'm at the Rose Bowl, it's nice. But like sharing this moment with you guys, this is where it actually happened. I always ask myself if, if I would have been on the left side, would this have happened? Or if my nickel cornerback with a red run, would I have been injured? Or if I would have just taken one extra step and not ducked the crown of my helmet like Coach Halleck used to always tell me, would I have gotten injured? You know, but too late now. I'm alive, I'm walking, I'm breathing. I can't, you know, complain, you know, I'm grateful. God, you know, I had a guardian angel that night. And uh, yeah, this is, it's crazy, man, coming out here. Every time I'm always appreciative, man, it's the Rose Bowl. So many legends have performed here. Super Bowls have been played here. National championships have been played here, man. My favorite players have been in this, in this arena. So for me to be here and be just one of one of many, man, I actually I take great pride in it. But yeah, just to play in my backyard, you know, have family and everyone be in the stands on Saturdays, it's a great feeling. Bruins, swag. D. Riley.